This is the What's Next podcast, Houston's number one platform where I invite creators to share their journeys and give us a depiction of their visions. Most importantly, the last question I'll ask is, what's next? Episode number 73. I want to say one time, shout out to my barber, Clipper Jones. What's up, man? About to get the show started soon, y'all. Houston, Texas, walk with me. Uh. Uh. Yo, I feel like 95. Sachi on my body. Biggie J. Yeah. Houston, Texas, welcome back to episode number 73 of the What's Next podcast, a production of Still Visionary, Inc. Um, before we get started with the episode, a couple of announcements. So at the conclusion of episode number 72, pardon me, I said that I was taking my real estate exam. Well, I passed the first test, y'all. Uh, second announcement, um, in episode number 72, I neglected to play my man's record. So we're going to start off here. Is it a vibe featuring my man Echo Remix? Just in time for the summer, y'all. Summer Breeze. Honestly, I can't wait to talk about this record. Is it a vibe? Is it a vibe, Houston, Texas? Just in time for the summertime, Houston, Texas. Again, the name of that segment is entitled Is It a Vibe by my man Echo Remix. Follow him on Instagram and Facebook. Um, like I said in episode 72, we're back to the telephone calls on the podcast. So, here we go. Hello, hello. Ruby. Yes. How are you? I like the way this sounds. Oh, great. How how do I sound? Do I sound good? You sound yes. You sound great. <laughs> <laughs> Houston, Houston, Texas. Uh, Ruby and myself were having difficulties last time recording the podcast, so we pushed it to the very last minute. What's going on with you? Nothing much. Living life, making moves. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, welcome back to episode number 73 of the What's Next podcast, a production of Still Visionary, Inc. Before we get started with the episode, let's introduce our social media handles so we don't disrupt the flow of the conversation when we get to that point. Yeah, so, all right, my social media, I think that's what you said. I, you cut out a little bit, but, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 keep going. We're we going to make it work today. We're going to make it work today. We got no other opportunities. Amen, amen. So uh, my social media on Instagram is at Queen Ruby Lee, and everywhere else I'm Ruby Lee Dove the Second. Okay, and my name is John Ross Dyke the First, and you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at John Ross Dyke and still underscore Visionary. If you would connect with me on LinkedIn, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my fan page on Facebook, and visit my website at stillvisionary.com. Ruby, you can't see this, but directly in front of me, I have all of my paraphernalia, and you can shop at Still Visionary dot com slash apparel 
I love it. So, um, you know, I, I have to uh, remind everybody that this is the second time we've been on the podcast. The first time we were on the podcast was during Labor Day week in 2019. And um, again, I'm so appreciative that you took out the time to be on my podcast. I've changed it since then so much, and I'm excited to dive into what you got going on and uh, just to pick your brain a little bit for as long as you allow us to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm now, with it. Now, if, you, if you're having difficulty hearing me, just go ahead and say so, and I'm going to speak up a little bit louder. Yeah, just speak up just a little bit because sometimes it cuts in and out, and when it cuts out, your, your sentences break off, and I can't get the complete sentence. No doubt, no doubt, and I'll repeat myself too. So um, how's it going? How are you? What's going on with you? Man, everything is going on with me, but, I mean, I've just really been spending my days educating myself and, and you know, trying to make sure I'm, I'm – I'm going to leave this pandemic and everything else better than what I entered it. And so really that's, if I had to sum up what's been going on, that's really what it is. Just baby steps one day at a time with everything. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the same for myself. I, I feel so blessed during this pandemic to um, have, have acquired and attained the things that I have during this time period. You know, uh, normally when you tell somebody that you're getting a house, when I told my mother I was buying a house, uh, this during this pandemic, she freaked out. So, um, you know, I'm just really blessed uh, during this time period to uh, to be this far because a lot of people, you know, have have been getting furloughed and have lost their jobs and stuff. And every other Wednesday, like clockwork, my bank account goes ching, 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 ching. So um, I can't complain f about anything. Hey Amen. That no, that that's absolutely amazing. And congratulations. I think that's that's worth like a moment. Congratulations on getting a home because that is a huge accomplishment and definitely something you should be proud of during a pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Ruby, uh, you know, I had to go back and listen to episode number thirty-one, which is now playing on my website and SoundCloud, Spotify, and Apple Music, entitled "Burn the Ships." I had to go back and listen to that podcast. And um, one thing that I added to the podcast from the last time we spoke was I wanted to understand and I wanted people to understand what they should take every time they listen to my podcast. So I kind of slid that up into the beginning of the podcast so that people, if they got into the podcast and they hadn't heard what they wanted to hear, they could just cut it off. So what do you think that people should take from our conversation today in regards to you and, and, and everything that you have going on? in your own brain right now in your company, Life After Life Productions and stuff. Yeah, man. And that's, that's such a, 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 that's a really good question. You know, what I want people to take from me during our conversation today. And I don't even know if it's just one thing. I mm -hmm. just, I just want people, if, if I, you know, had to pinpoint one thing, it would be that no matter at what stage you are in life, wherever you you see yourself is so possible. And, you know, because when I look back on my journey and I'm not like some majorly successful person, but I am proud of where I am. And when I look back to where I, from where I came from to the average person, my story doesn't make sense. Like I shouldn't be where I am. Like the statistics and the numbers don't add up. Yeah. I should not be where I am. Yeah. And so I would want people to take from this conversation that it, no matter where you are, no matter what it looks like, no matter what obstacle is standing in your way, like wherever you want to go is possible. And the way, the way you know it's possible is because of the fact that you even thought about it. If you can fathom the thought, that means it's possible. Hmm. I like that. I like that because um, it, it, it allows a room and a space for people like you and I to uh, defy the odds. I really like that, like what you just said. Um, before we go any further, uh, today is um, July the 6th, 2020. If you could, with one word, how would you define uh, or how would you surmise an L.A. actress, an L.A. entrepreneur, an L.A. businesswoman in 2020 with one word, if you could? How would I define it in one word? If you could put it in one word, how would what, what would that word be? 
Perseverance. Perseverance. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. So, um, you know, I don't know if you were aware of this, but when, when we spoke last year, um, and I, I, you were the last episode and I remember it, it just fit. It seemed like it fit episode 31. Your birthday is on August the 31st, 2000. Oh, what your, your birthday is on August the 31st. You were the 31st mm -hmm. guest on the, on the podcast. Right. But coincidentally, and I really don't even want to say coincidentally, I spoke to four African-American women um, during my time period in L.A. last year. You were the fourth. Um, it, it just so happened that all four of y'all were from Texas. Right. But I had on um, I've had on now three of the four women that I spoke to last year. And one of the women um, said that it is pivotal that in the time period that we're in, that creatives are making art that is reflective of the time period. And so um, with everything that's going on right now, how do you see yourself and your creativity revolving around that? How do I see my career revolving around where we are right now in the world? Yeah, with, uh, with what's um, going on, with what's going on in society, racial injustices, police brutality and all of that. Yeah. Um, you know, before I, I moved to L.A. and, you know, I had started this, this self-love and this, this very spiritual journey, I used to do a lot of blogging and writing and putting out, you know, written content about my views and my thoughts um, about what was going on with me and what was going on in the world. And I stopped doing that. Mm. And it, a lot of it is because, you know, we moved out here. Things started picking up as acting, you know, different business opportunities arose. But now considering, you know, everything that's going on, I realized that like how everybody else is posting like massively online and on Instagram, when everybody else was posting like crazy, I deleted all the pictures off of my Instagram. What pictures? And what pictures? Like everything, every single thing on my Instagram. Like now there's a few pictures on there because I started posting again. But, you know, when everything happened, when the videos uh, for of George Floyd, you know, um, may he rest in power. Yeah, you know, for started sure. surfacing. Yes. And, you know, when those videos started surfacing, when the videos of Brianna or when the information about Brianna Taylor um, started surfacing, everything, you know, and it, those aren't even the only ones. But mm -hmm. everybody else was posting like crazy. And mm -hmm. I completely wiped my Instagram feed. And I, I couldn't figure out why I just felt like, like God was like, just clear it, right? Like yeah. just, just clear it, just clear your stuff off. And I'm, I'm, I have to share this to be able to, you know, answer your question. And for the longest, I couldn't figure out what it was. And I realized that, um, every, in, in this fight for justice and, and through everything that we're going through, everybody has a different job. Not everybody is, is the hand. Not everybody mm. are the feet, mm. you know, and, and we, we all have a different job. So while somebody's way to fight justice may be posting, you know, and, and raising awareness, that's not everybody's job. Mm. And, and I think the, the importance in this fight is, is knowing your, your job. And mm. I realized that, that that was why I was led to do that because God said, Ruby, that's not your job in this. Mm. And what I believe your job is, is you need to go back to writing. Mm. You need to allow people like a, a, a picture and a snapshot with some paragraphs. That's not enough. People really need to be able to understand how your mind works because it might help somebody else. And, and so to answer your question, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I, I'm, I'm shifting and I'm going back to writing and, and blogging. And it's so funny that you asked me that because I'm, I'm going to start publishing the blog out this week. So it, but that to answer your question, that is how, you know, I'm fighting and how I'm shifting and I'm maneuvering. I'm going back to, to what I know. I'm going back to what I came from and yeah. that's writing and putting my words out there. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that while you were talking, I was thinking about, um, my, my homeboy, 
um, hit me up on Instagram and he said, hey, Jay, I got to educate the people. And I was thinking to myself because he said and I was thinking the same thing. He said, you know, I don't know if your platform is for that, but um, I got to educate the people. And I was thinking to myself, now is the perfect time to open up. Right. Um, but Mm -hmm. like I was telling him, I would have only, I only opened up because he had been on the podcast as a creative, right? Cause I don't want to open my platform to everybody who feels that they want their opinion heard because everybody's opinion is not needed. Right. And so what I ended up saying on that episode was that, um, everybody needs to understand their role on a team. And just hearing you say that, it, it wasn't your place to be posting pictures because like you said, everybody, everybody is, is flooding Instagram with all of these pictures that you would have never known were taken. And it gets overwhelming. That's another thing that, that Kalea said in episode number uh, 67, that the trauma porn, every, the, the murdering, every, we're getting accustomed to people seeing the murders and, 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 and getting numb to that feeling that, Oh, there goes another black man dying. So um, just you saying that, you know, understanding your role in this in this fight is prevalent. I, I I totally totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so important. Yeah. So uh, creativity comes from experiences. Um, where did you start first with this writing? Because I I you know one thing as as let me say this. Um, you know I'm a fan of yours. You know I'm a fan of yours. Um, I've always enjoyed watching you evolve on the internet because at arm's length you know where somebody started and you see their progression and um it's a magical experience and from that i, I want to say for myself that i enjoy your creativity and your artistry i enjoy it because um it gives me a sense that you know what this is somebody that i know that is not taking for granted the platform that she's created for herself so I want to say that first and foremost, that I enjoy your artistry and anything that you allow me to repost for you, I will. So creativity comes from experiences. Let's, let's start with, with, with what you're writing and how, you, how, you, how you're coming up with that. Yeah. Uh, the, repeat the last part for me, though. I heard creativity comes from experiences. But you, and you want me to talk about, you know, my experiences and how they've affected me creatively. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. But I w- yeah. what I was saying was what I was saying was that um, just your evolution as an artist, um, especially because you mentioned that you used to write and you're going back to what you came from and who you know you are. I appreciated those time periods that you were writing and anything that you post yeah. now, I want to repost with your permission moving forward. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that, you know, any, any support, I'm always abundantly thankful and grateful for because it's, you know, it's not something that people have to do. So, you know, mm. even beforehand, I, I thank you. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. And, and, and you're absolutely right. Like my experiences have shaped who I am as a creator. And I really think it just, I, I, I can't say that I could pinpoint just one specific experience that has, you know, that can encapsulate my entire career as a creative. It's literally every, every piece along the way from, from being a, a, a loner in, in high school to, to then joining theater and being able to learn about myself. That's the whole reason why, you know, I, I have a performing art school that I'm in the process of, of, of forming. Right. Mm, so, mm. and it, it's because I want children to be able to find themselves in the art the same way I did. Mm-hmm. And then we can even take it to, you know, you know, poor relationships. You know, we, we've all been there. We've had poor relationships. So yeah. now my, my art revolves around creating worlds where healthy relationships thrive because what our children see is what they inevitably become. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's just, and, and then of course, and when we talk about just the black experience as a whole, you know, that's the reason behind the 1944 play we talked about in the burn the ships episode. Mm. It's the entire reason, you know, behind the, the black history month production, you know, I, I helped create at Cal Lutheran university here in California. Back Look at in you. February, Look right? at you. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's, and, but, and, and just to go back to what you're saying, it, it all goes back to experience. 
experience, like everything, every piece of my life I pull from, which is why my art continues to grow. And it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with with allowing God to meet me in every situation and and show me how to get something from it. And I think when we don't do that, then our experiences are are void. They're, They're for not. They're for we don't get anything from it, right? Like Eric Thomas says, like, if you go, if you go, like, if you're going to cry, if you're going to get hurt, get something from it. And I believe that, like, if you're going to go through something, get something from it, whether it's you being able to help somebody or whether it's you being able to create a piece of art that touches somebody, I'm a firm believer in that. And, and I'm just thankful that I've been able to tap into the main source so that I can create from every situation that I've been in. Yeah. 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 Wow. You know, you never cease to amaze me, Ruby. You never do. I want to let you know that. (laughs) Well, thank you. (laughs) You never, you never cease to amaze me. And, you know, it's, it's crazy that you bring up 1944 because I was thinking, you know, in listening back to the burning ships episode again, Houston, Texas, that uh, episode is now playing on SoundCloud, Spotify, and um, um, iTunes. But in going back and listening to um, that episode and hearing you talk about, um, I think his name was George Stinney. Was that is that his name? Uh huh, George Stinney. Yeah, and 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 seeing you, and seeing you, uh, and hearing you talk about that, I was I I thought to myself, man, you know, this is something in hindsight we wouldn't have known that it that. As of, uh, I think, as of Lab- not Labor Day, Memorial Day weekend of 2000, 2020, that um, the stuff that you were talking about in terms of being falsely accused and being persecuted in front of these white folks, that we would still be going through that same instance. And I thought to myself, wow, here we are talking about a project that you wrote in lieu of um, of our history in America. And then here we are again in 2020. I'm getting ready to get on the podcast with you again and this 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 recollection this recollection this um turmoil that we face is still going on mm-hmm. i thought it i thought it was i thought it was crazy to say the least it is crazy it is and it, it's the the irony in it 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 kind of it kind of gives me goosebumps right because to be honest i mean it it hasn't changed it's just now we're more aware of it right we're yeah. more aware of everything yeah yeah um, so it's, it's motivated me too to, to pick up the pen and write. Actually, I, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, for so long I've wanted, and I'm facing this now just to find not, not, the, not within myself, but an external appreciation for my art artistry. Right. So I've been, um, you know, I was kind of down a little bit yesterday because I felt like, you know, you work hard as an, you work hard as an artist and the least that you want people to do is acknowledge what you've done, what you do and what you're doing. Right. Because if it was left up to me, then I would be the richest man in the world because for me, I do what I do for the love. Right. Shout out to my homegirl Takara, but I do what I do for the love. But if, if it's left up to other people, they don't give you your flowers until it's over. Right. And so, um, where I was going with, with that was that, you know, um, I just think that it's it's a delicate thing to be out here creating and it's gotten me into my bag again of writing and wanting to write and wanting to act and get behind that screen and wanting to be another character to portray another character, man. And, you know, I just, uh, wow, I just, you know, it's good to hear that, that somebody else is in that same space as I am. Yeah. So what else is new with you, man? How are you? How's your daughter? Oh my goodness, my daughter is 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 growing up <laughs> much faster than than what I would, you know, like for her to. Yeah. But um, you know, there, there's it's, it's, it's bittersweet. I'm loving the fact that she's at an age to where like like we go on walks for about an hour every day, mm. almost every day, mm. and um, so just being able to talk to her and see her mind and help mold her mind into the person that you know I I know that she deserves to become is 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 really it's fun and it's rewarding. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, the husband's good, the family's good, you know, you know, my, just like you were saying, it really resonated with me to know that, you know, that you said, you know, you you especially during this time, you're you're very blessed and your family is taken care of and you guys aren't hurting from anything and 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 I can say the exact same and you know, I I feel moved to actually share a quick story if you don't mind. Of course. Um, Just listen, this is this is our yeah. time. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Yeah. And I, I had shared it at one point, like on my, my Instagram, but it was part of the stuff that it got wiped away. But, you know, just in talking about like how we really are blessed during this time and we haven't lost anything during this pandemic. And it's really been a blessing. And um, I, I feel as though like I need to give my testimony because I feel like it's going to help somebody. You know, sometimes we'll be trying to accomplish certain things in life and certain obstacles will come and we still in our mind, like that's a sign from God telling us that maybe our goals aren't what he wants. Mm. And, and that's, yeah. And, and that's not always the case. The thing is, is, is that, you know, the, the universe, the source, God can see way into the future. And, you know, when I graduated high school, you know, every, I told everybody in my family, I'm going to graduate high school then I'm going to go to college and then I'm moving to California. That's mm. my life. I'm never, I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to have kids. That was my story growing up. Mm. And, and, you know, I, I ended up being pregnant. So yeah. then life, life changed. And because I got pregnant, I decided to join the military. Mm. And like, if, if I wouldn't have had my daughter, I would have never joined the military. Mm. So, um, so I, I, I joined the military and I got out of the military, I finished school and I still continued and I ended up coming to California after I graduated college. But that, that speed bump there, right? And I think a lot of people would have taken that speed bump to say, okay, well, maybe I don't need to chase my dream. I need to like stop what I'm doing and just focus on something else. And the thing that's been feeding my family, the not the only thing, but one of the main sources that's been feeding my family right now is a commercial we booked last year mm. and we're receiving residual money for it every few weeks. And the commercial and like, like clockwork, good residual money during a pandemic is when the check started coming in mm. and the commercial only wanted a U.S. soldier with a husband and a daughter. Mm. So, so what I thought was my obstacle was really my setup for what God saw in the future. And so just, you know, you talking about your family and saying you guys were blessed, like that, that's beautiful. And it, it really just touched me. And I want people to know, like, like your family can be blessed even yeah. despite what it looks like right now or what obstacle it is, because yeah. man, God has been so good to us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Memorial day came, Labor day will come. And I want to wish you, I want to say thank you for your service to the United States of America. First and foremost, I want to say thank you for your service. I want to go on by saying this too. Um, you know, 4th of July just passed and, you know, and thinking about this episode and where I wanted to go with this episode with you, Ruby, I was like, you know what, that would be great to get on 4th of July, but then it didn't work. So of course, God's timing is God's timing. But uh, as I look back now to Fourth of July, and you're or you are a, a veteran from the from the military, how did you celebrate Fourth of July in terms of like with family festivities? Knowing knowing that there, so this is what I will say. Yesterday, I watched the church service, Hope City's church service online, and the pastor, the guest pastor, was talking about the tension between grace and truth, right? And so how I'll push that forward into what we're talking about now is that th there's a tension between country and the people. Right. And when I say the people, I really mean African-American people, people of melanin. Right. So as a retired um, and I don't even know if retired, but as a as somebody who served their country, how do you correlate? How do you feel in terms of like this tension between your people who you write so adamantly about who you are so profound about who are you, who you are so, um, for and how we're being treated in relations to 4th of July and this country being free, but there's an underlying tension that, that black people are still not free. How do you, how does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel 
Yeah, and I, I think that that's a wonderful question. And to be completely honest with you, um, I haven't I haven't celebrated the Fourth of July in years. Mm. Um, my daughter will tell you, you know, every time it comes around, I, I I'm very adamant to you know make her aware that the Fourth of July, 1776, our ancestors were not free, and. You know, I, I absolutely make sure that she knows and that she understands that, you know, even with other figures in history that are held to certain standards, I make sure that she knows who they truly are. And so, you know, as it relates to me being a, a veteran in the in the U.S. Army, to be honest, uh, I, I'm, I'm black first. Mm. I was born black. I wasn't born a soldier. Mm. And and. When I joined the military and I raised my right hand to, you know, to protect and defend the U.S. Constitution, what that entailed was was allowing people the freedom to exercise that right. So, so that means you have the you have the freedom to celebrate, or you have the freedom to choose not to. But I didn't raise my hand to force any ideal on either side, mm-hmm. um, and so. But I, I definitely, and, and to be honest, the way we, I guess you could say, celebrated the 4th of July, you know, I'm not Muslim, but I've always respected the words of Minister Luis uh, Farrakhan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we we got up, we got up that morning and we listened to his, his two hour speech mm. and um, we took it to heart and we really, you know, took time to meditate on those words. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so that, that, that. To be honest, any other year, the 4th of July is just another day in my house. And, yeah. it, and it has nothing to do with respect or disrespect. It's just, it's not a holiday that relates to me. I can't relate to it. Yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't celebrate the Chinese New Year because I, I, it doesn't, it has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's, it's not a, oh, well, I hate this country thing. It's a, the 4th of July has nothing to do with me. It just doesn't relate to my ancestors and my lineage. So why would I celebrate it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, and and I'm so glad that I, that we did not record the podcast on the 4th. Right. I'm so glad that this is the time period we recorded it because it gave me some time and some perspective to think about how I wanted to approach you because I I really like this episode and, and for a few reasons, one of the reasons being, you don't have to have something that's that's necessarily like like I'm talking to you now and this is a podcast for the creative. So I don't have you don't as a creative don't have to necessarily have something going on at that very moment to have experiences. One, two, just to catch you in this rawness, like in this whole aspect of, you know, I'm 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 oh, my eyes are awakened and I'm using I'm using what the Lord gave me. If, if, if he wants me to move, I'll move. If he doesn't give it to me, then I won't accept it. Right. So I'm enjoying talking to you while you're in this form, because last year was totally different from this year. Right. And so, and so, uh, I'm appreciative of that. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. What I will ask you is this, um, I'm an independent person. You know that um, this podcast is self-produced. Everything that I've ever done has always been on the independent level, right? And so I look to people like yourself, people like my homeboy to walk me through how the industry does it, right? And you said something about residual money. I've um, been trying to fathom that. What does that look like? Can you walk me through as an actor? Can you walk me through the process of auditioning, booking, and then when you book, you finish the project, and then it's time to receive payment. Can you walk me through that process? Yeah, I just want to make sure I, I, I heard your question right. So just walking you through the process of, of auditioning, booking, and then showing up on set ready to work. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, even even before auditioning comes, you know, there there's a certain amount of there, there's some, some pre-work that has to be done or some work that has to be done. And it, and it, it's training, you know, knowing how to audition, because to be honest, the way you audition is not the same way that you, you actually perform. Mm. They're looking for a certain thing when you go in and audition. And the audition isn't always about knowing the line. You, you should know the lines, but that's just the base. That's the standard, right? And so 
it start the audition starts with the mindset. You know, once you once you get that audition, whether it's because you self submitted yourself on a platform like LA Casting or Actors Access, or whether you have an agent or a manager and they sent you the audition, um, you have to go into it not like not with the mindset of "Ooh, I hope I get this" or "Ooh, I want a job," but shift your mindset to "I'm here to solve a problem." You need an actor, and I'm I'm that actor. I'm just going to show you what I got. Mm. And it's not a cockiness, but it's a confidence because if they feel like you are, are are desperate for a job or you're just giddy or you're 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 immature, then they know that that's how you're going to reflect on set. They wow. want to see a professional in the room because if if they cast you and then you show up on set and you 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 don't know what's going on, you you nervous, you can't you know, get your stuff right because you're just so nervous and, and shocked and at everything, then that looks bad on the casting director. So yeah. they're looking at protecting their name, right? Yeah. There's a term that's called book the room. You just got to book the room so that mm. even if you don't book the gig, they're going to always call you back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, and if, if I had to sum up auditioning, that that's really what it is. Like, Learning the lines, that's the standard. That that's the basis. That's where it starts. All the other stuff, that that's those are the sprinkles on top. Get those in there. Um, and then knowing that when you don't book the audition, that nine times out of ten, it has absolutely nothing to do with your talent. Mm. At, it, it doesn't. And when you when you realize that, then you you stop feeling bad about not booking things, right? It could yeah. be a height issue. Like like in Hollywood, Jr. We you and I would have never booked Love Is. One of us wouldn't have booked it because I either would have been too short or you would have been too tall. In Hollywood, <laughs> I'm telling you, in Hollywood, our heights are not compatible. Yeah. In Hollywood, that that role would have been you and Takara, and Nicole would have been the ex girlfriend. Yeah. Because all of you guys' heights are compatible. I would yeah. have been nowhere in the movie. Yeah. And so. And so when you think about it like that, you, you take some of that weight off yourself. Mm. Like, because it, 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 it has nothing to do with you. It's not about you. And um, so, I mean, and then as far as like booking the gig, that's when the real work starts. Yeah. That's, that's when the real work starts. And I, I say, you know, anytime you book a gig, you show up on set, you be absolutely professional, you be polite. You don't, I'm not saying let people walk over you because, you know, they'll try it in, in some places, but, um, like, you know, be kind, be polite to everybody because those people will want you back. I've worked on sets before and had the director want me in another project just because I was so pleasant to be around on the set. Yeah. And so it's, it's like your career is more the acting is, is just the small part, right? It's mm -hmm. about making sure that you're, you're a good person. Like people actually want to be around you. Yeah. But wow. Yeah. And then, and then what about the residual part, the part that makes an actor an actor outside of emoting outside of booking and auditioning? What about the getting paid part? Yeah. And, and, and getting paid is like, it, it changes based on the range, right? Like if you're doing a student film, that pay's going to look different than if you're doing just an independent non-union film. Um, now when you get into the SAG world, there are some stipulations and I'm, I'm SAG. So, you know, there's certain, I can't work on certain projects now. Yeah, yeah. So, talk up, talk up, Ruby, talk up. God damn. Talk up. Shit. <laughs> What's going on? Talk up. Let's go. <laughs> you're a mess you're a mess talk up but let's yeah, go so let's go listen I know people in important places man let's go <laughs> oh man I'm just I'm just being used by God let me tell you no doubt but, amen yes but I mean the I, I always tell people if you want fame do movies and if you want money do commercials Mm. You can get the money's going to come either way. Right. But mm. the the good money, from my experience, is from commercials because you get you, that. That's like a steady paycheck in a way, as long as the commercial is running. Mm. Um, you you look up. I mean, last year I got an email from a commercial I did two years ago mm. that was like, hey, we're running this commercial again. Where should we send your check? Mm. So. So, I mean, the commercials is where you're going to be able to get to a place to where you're a steady 
working actor and you don't have to be working at the coffee shop at night, you know, or whatever it is you're doing because yeah. you, you have your residuals coming in. Yeah. 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 What songs on your mind right now? Oh man. You always ask me that. <laughs> and, and <laughs> you do, you do. Yeah. So there's a, um, with us talking about justice and and everything going on in the world, because that's kind of still on my heart. Uh, I, I've, I've, I'm a big Janelle Monae fan, and, and I've mm. been a Janelle Monae fan since I was in high school. Mm. And um, on on her latest album, Dirty Computer, there's a song called America. Mm. And that song is on my mind right now. So if you don't know it, go listen to it, and then you'll understand why it's on my mind right now. I will. Um, I will. Yeah. And for me, um, I'm going to go two. Do you have another one, or is it just that one? Because I don't want to. No, I think that's it. I okay. think that's it for me. Okay. Um, um, for me, uh, I'm going to go with Lil Baby, I'm Straight. That, that record right there really made me a fan of him. That, that record, I'm Straight, off of the Harder Than Hard LP. I'm going to go with I'm Straight. And then off the Nas and Dame, and uh, is it Damien, Damien Marley? Nas and Damien Marley um, collab. I'm going to go Leaders. Because I think in this, in this particular time that we're in, we're not seeing leaders. People that can re- well, actually, we have some leaders. But the leaders that we're looking to, i.e. the President of the United States, you know, we don't have that security in him speaking up for what's going on and, and knowing that, you know what, we can live and die by that. The leaders that yeah. we have right now um, are forced to into this spot. Like, for example, Stephen Jackson Sr., he's one of our leaders right now, trying to make sure that we understand that, listen, even though we're not talking about it, we're still in it. You know what I'm saying? And so don't, don't, don't for a second think that, oh, because it's no longer ahead on CNN or or it's no longer in front of your newspapers and stuff like that. We're still going through it. So don't be dis- don't be a fooled by the distractions. Right. So we just uh, we're in a time period now where we need leaders, people that, you know, know how to know how to work both sides. You know what I'm saying know how to tell people, listen, you need to relax. Listen, uh, we're a country. We're going through some turmoil right now. We have police that are we have bad police but we will fix the problem and we want to ensure that America understands or people that are looking at us understand that this is an equal opportunity country. Everybody's equal. You know what I'm saying? And we haven't had our leader say that. So leaders is on my mind and I'm straight because, yeah. because like you said, like you said, um, I'm blessed, you know, in a pandemic, we were able to buy a house. I haven't lacked for um, money you know what I'm saying? My parents are straight. My in-laws are straight. My wife is straight. So, you know, I'm straight. I love that. Yeah. I love that. You always give me new music to go listen to. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Um, you know, this is, it's not ideal, Ruby, but um, it's what I have right now. And um, I'm appreciative of it always. I'm always appreciative of your insight, your professionalism on the podcast. I wish that I wish that I could be in L.A. again later on because I wanted to make it a thing. But, you know, you got to you got to deal with the times that you're in. And, you know, God willing, next year it'd be different and I can be back in L.A. in uh, uh, Pomona. Did I get it right? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not there no more. But, <laughs> I've been practicing that for a year, <laughs> and it was all for nothing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh man, I've been practicing Pomona and, and enunciating that word for a year, and now I finally think I got it right. But it, it it's neither here nor there. It's all good though. You need to say it so I can remember my humble beginnings where I where I lived when I first came to California. Yeah. I was in Pomona. I'm not ashamed to say it. Where y'all where y'all at now? The secret place. Okay. I'll tell you in a text message. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Because this, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I pre- no, I appreciate that. Um, like I said, today is um July the sixth. 
2020 and we have 178 days left in the 2020 year. What do you hope to attain in 178 days? Man, I just want to continue to grow. That's what I'm focusing on. I just want to continue to grow as a leader, um, as a mentor and as a model, uh, and, and not like, you know, model like pictures, a model like, you know, showing people the way and showing people what's possible. So for me, the, the, the final tail end of 2020 is about growth and education for me. Yeah. 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 Would you say, would you say that 2020 is over? Would you, I've heard that on other podcasts and I meant to ask that to everybody that I've, I've been associated with that I come into communication with. Would you say that 2020 and when I say that it being over, I mean just that the plans that you thought that you had for this year have been pushed into 2021. Would you say that 2020 is over? You, no, to be honest, I wouldn't say it's over. Let me tell you, I got to, I got to, I got to take two more minutes from you. Go ahead, because, man. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Yeah, Listen, because, go ahead. you know, it was, it was a resounding theme across multiple people, multiple platforms, across all ethnicities. Everybody was like, I want to come into 2020, the 2020 vision. Everybody was saying, it, right? Yeah. This, this year, 2020 vision. And I feel like God said, you guys want 2020 vision. I'm going to give it to you. Mm. And we got it. Mm. Everything that's happening right now, it's not, it's, it's really not new when we look at it. It's like we've been given a pair of glasses and now our vision is perfect and we see things as they have always been. Yeah. And now, and now this is the opportunity to either make change or get left behind. And you have to ask yourself, do you want to be on the right side of history or the wrong side? And I think that's what's happening right now. So I don't think it's over. To be honest, I think this is an opportunity for growth for so many people. I've heard that, um, like bad situations are the mother of innovation. Um, pandemics are the are the mother of creativity. Mm. Um, problems problems are the mother of, of 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 millionaires and creativity and innovation. Because in order to to create opportunity and and be innovative, there has to be a problem that needs to be solved. So while there are groups of people in the world that are looking at everything that we're going through and they're seeing the problem and the problem's there. It is, but they're focusing on it. And, and when you shift your focus to the opportunity within the problem, that's when change starts to happen. Mm. So I don't think 2020 is over. I think 2020 is being cleansed so that 2021 can be prosperous. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Oh, man. Um, I would hope that after this episode that we I can bring you on again, whether whether I'm in L.A. or you just I just call you another time. Is that cool with you? That That is absolutely cool with me. Good. You know, I'm down. Good. Good. So most importantly, the last question I'll ask is for you, Queen Ruby Lee. You know, I used to say uh, Ruby D and and. <laughs> All pun intended because because of the late great actress rest of me. You know what? This is what I'll say before I say that. Um, I want to say uh, you mentioned it earlier. I want to say rest in peace to uh, Breonna Taylor because we still haven't had justice for her. I want to say rest in peace to Vanessa uh, Guillen. You know, she is uh, she's actually a product of Houston Independent School District out here. So um, one of my colleagues at work sent me the article and I read it. And I was just devastated about that. You know, I want to say rest in peace to George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery. And, um, that was one more. Um, and, uh, Rashard Brooks. And I also want to, want to say rest in peace to Elijah. Uh, is it McLean? McLean, I believe it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. I want to say rest in peace to y'all, man. Um, we need justice. We demand justice. And, um, you know, their families are in my thoughts and prayers. But uh, to you, I will say this. Um, where was I going before I said that? I was saying something. And maybe it'll hit me later. Do you remember what I was saying? <laughs> nah, you didn't get to it. You just said my next question. I mean, you didn't get to it. <laughs> um, yeah, man, it'll hit me later. And I'll just put it in the show notes. 
Um, but most importantly, the last question I'll ask you is, um, what's next for you? What's next for Ruby? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Rest in peace to uh, the great Ruby D. Rest in peace to her. Go ahead. But what's next for you? Yes, yes. Um, what's next for me is is really like you know what I I think it I think it just mirrors you know you know what I said previously mm-hmm. is is continued growth. Yeah. Um, because in in growth, uh, other things stem from. Yeah. And and so I know that if I continue focusing on my personal growth then everything else around me will flourish. So that's what's next for me. I don't have any, you know, specific, any big project that I really want to like name, even though I'm working on a few things. Yeah. yeah. But all in all, it's, it's about growth for me. It mm. really is. Yeah. Will you give me the exclusive to the next project? Um, I will say that, uh, I'm, I'm working. I will. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not, no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, um, the name. I w- I'm just saying when you have it all said and done, will you come to the what's next podcast and talk about it first? Oh, you know what? I definitely will. Okay. I will do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not looking yes. for a name because I understand that, you know, when it, when it's in development <laughs> stages, you really can't, you really don't want to talk about it much. Yeah. But just, just when you get it said and done and, and I text you, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, and you're just like, yo, and I'm like, hey, what's going on? You're like, hey, I got a project. Can I get on the podcast? For sure. When you want to do that right now, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? If I can get that, if I can get that first passage, I'll be grateful. Yes. Oh, you, you got it. You say what? <laughs> you have- <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Oh man! So at this point in time, you know, last year I gave you a T-shirt. This year I'm going to add to it, right? So when I um when we get off the podcast. Uh, and I and you answered that question I asked you earlier. Um, when I have the t-shirts ready, I'll mail them to you. Yeah. Yeah. Man, but uh, like I said, man, uh, do you have anything else? Give me something else. Give me something else. Give us something else. Some. Ooh, you put me put me on the spot. Yeah. Give give um, give us some give give us some ruby wisdom. Give us something else. Um, well, you know what you, you mentioned leadership and, you know, I know right now we're in a time where everybody is, is seeking a leader. We're seeking someone, you know, to follow. And, and I would just encourage everybody to pay attention to your leaders, right? Because, or, or to the people that, that you're calling leaders and know that, you know, a leader isn't someone that that's solely pushing their own agenda. Yeah. Um, a leader, a leader is someone that can see the potential in others and spark change in others so that they can reach their potential. A leader is someone that can model and mentor Mm. what, what needs to come. And unless our, the people that we're calling leaders are doing that, then we might need to look around and change, you know, who we're following and who we're looking at. And the other, I would end with saying, please register to vote. If you're not, and you're listening to this. Ruby, great nugget. Yeah. Ruby, great nugget. Damn, good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yo, I'm so grateful that we finally got the episode done. I am. Because, because I was like, man, I hope, I hope that I, I'm just, I hope that this episode <laughs> is just where it works out, man. I'm so grateful. Like, um, So, uh, Houston, Texas, uh, I do what I do for myself to prove that I can do it for others. Ruby Lee Dove the second. Say bye. Bye, y'all. All right, y'all, I'm going to hit you in a second. All right. Yo, I feel like 95. Sachi on my body. Biggie, Jigga, Puffy, and all that ball. Time.
up. Yeah.